Luke chapter 17 verses 11 down to verse 19. The same will read this responsibly. Nangyan na kayo? Okay. Okay. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed to the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were blessed. And one of them, when he saw that he was ill, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face and his feet, giving him hands, and he was sorry. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleans? But where are the nine? Verse 19, we'll read it all together. Ready? Go. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. This morning, we will be talking about the ten lepers. Sa Tagalog, kitong. Kitong. Okay. Sa buhol, pag sabihin niyo kitong, malaking isda yun. No. Sa buhol. At iniigaw. O. Oh. Merong mga salita na parang sabihin natin different yung meaning. Pag yung sabihin natin sa buhol, gubat. Gubat. Dito sabi nila yung gubat. It's the forest. The forest where you could hide. But in Bohol, when you say Cuba, it's already uh, like entering into the war. Like in Mindanao, early in the morning. When they change bullets, and then our military men would also uh, give an exchange to the multi. Then early in the morning, you can say, Ratatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
when we speak of this kind of disease, it is contagious. Hindi kayo maka mingle with people. At the same time, this is an incurable disease. So, you have to stay away from these people. And Jesus Christ passing in the midst of Samaria and Galilee because these thin lepers were there. And they sila makapunta ng party. And they sila makapunta ng kasal. And they sila makapunta kahit saan. It is because their law at the time was so harsh that all these people are prohibited. There, uh, there was avoidance when we speak of mingling with people. And yet, Jesus Christ went there. Pagkikita natin, in verse 12, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. You notice that they cannot come closer to Jesus. Hindi sila makalapit kay Jesus. Kasi, the people will say, okay, you just stay there. They stood afar off. Sa iba, walang kwintang mga tao yun. Mamamatay yun. But in the eyes of God, what is important is the soul of these people. Yung kaluluwa. Whatever you have in this life, maski you are good-looking person or bad-looking person, remember that what is important is your soul, yung kaluluwa. Because it says, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and loses his own soul? And this kind of this is slippers, this is the picture of sin. Picture of sin. That once you have this kind of diseases, of this disease, then you are already have that judgment. Walang kwintang tao yun. But in the eyes of God, again, I would say, your soul is very, very important. That Jesus Christ he went in the midst because these people are waiting for him. So the first thing that I would like to show that, that I would like to share is the, the distress of these people. When I speak of distress, I mean to see the grief that they have. Parang wala nang taong naawa sa kanila. Wala. Pagdadaan mo tao, alam mo tao, walang kwenta. We cannot go with these people. So these thought, these thought are far off. Well, I'm going to their distress. Can you just imagine? Like if you have a brother and then he's not a leaper and then invited to some of the festival during the time of the Jews. You cannot go. You are separated. Even in a time of Uzziah, when he usurped the power by which it is pertained to the priest, then at that time he was uh, lepros, this leprosy. So what happened? He was isolated. Can you just imagine? When I stayed in my condominium, which is in Santras, when I stayed there last night, I was alone because my companion. They attended a reunion, the other visiting friends, because ngayon wala kami asok sa review. I was just, I was just looking because we were at the highest point. When I looked there, I saw all these uh, vehicles as, as big as the match. I said, oh, why? And then I feel that actually that, thanks God I have my Bible. I read my Bible, this Bible, uh, the Old and the New Testament, I read that six times already. Six times already. In the stress of these people, 
you can say there's a phrase. Kasi walang, walang gamot. Noon, walang gamot. You can see their sufferings. Their disappointment in life. Baka sabi sila, bakit ganito ang buhay ko? Yung iba. Walang sakit. Ako meron. Di ba? Oh. The sufferings that they went through. And thanks God that at this very moment, we have this kind of life. We have this kind of body. And then, we are healthy in the eyes of God, in the eyes of man, and we have this fellowship. That's why Apostle Paul also experienced this when he said in the book of Rome, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 28, when he said, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom he did for know he also predestined that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Whom he did predestined, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then see to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Uh -huh. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, and is risen again, and is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for they say, we are killed all the day long. And Apostle Paul said, we are killed all the day long. As it is written, for they say, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted a sheep for the slaughters. Yea, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. And he said in verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor heights, nor deeps, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And in the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. That we shall be called the sons of God. Tawagin tayo ng anak sa Panginoon. Pag tawagin kayong anak ni Presidente Duterte. Parang ang ano mo. Malaki na kayo. We are the sons of God. John 3.16 said. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Imagine that. When we have all these sufferings, when we have all this disappointment in life, remember, Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. That's why he came. He passed through the midst of Samaria and Gal uh, Samaria, and also this Galilee, because there were people that need salvation, not only their physical, but also their spiritual. Your soul is so important in the eyes of God. Number two, the distress, and then their desire. What are this? What are their desire? In verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. This morning, what is your desire in life? What is your desire? Their desire, it is that there could be a healing in the way they live as lepers. Gusto nila na sila yung kanilang 
buhay yung kaniyang katawan gusto nila that they could be healed they left up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us this morning what is your desire in life Pastor, what is your desire? Your desire. The thing that you want to acquire in this life. This thing, uh, the, the very thing that you wanted to be in the future. Oh, walang bayad yung desire eh. There's no, when you dream, walang bayad yun. When you desire, wala yung bayad. The only thing is, this labors here, they said, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Their only desire is that Jesus will have mercy on them. Ngayon tayo, hindi naman tayo mga lepers, hindi naman tayo mga mga tao na mayroong kapansanan sa buhay. Pero, as a Christian, the song that we heard yung solo God's perfect way the best way Amen. Oh, yun. the best way God's way is the best way and then yung desire was granted by God If God granted their desire, once you will also dream of something in your life. Remember Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. It says, And all things, and all things that you will go through in prayer, believing that ye shall receive. And verse John chapter 5, verse 13, 14, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. John chapter 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Ibigay sa Panginoon. Ibigay sa Panginoon. What is your desire today? <coughs> when they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, then their desire was granted when Jesus said, and when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. Imagine. You can ask, Pastor, why is it that Jesus Christ, instead of telling, okay, we will all be healed right at this time, in this place. But they commanded because at the time, yung mga sacerdote or yung mga priest, sila yung mga antagonist. They don't believe on the work of Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus commanded them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. What if at that day, sampo sila, sampo. Yung isa, sabi na niya, ah, I will stop. I will just go to the side of Jordan and I will just stay there. Hopeless na tayo, wala na tayo. Buti na punta siya. And then, katulad din sa sampo. And then, when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass. As they went, they were healed. Ito talaga. How do you feel the moment you are healed? How do you feel when all your sacrifices in life, after all, you have gained what your purpose in life. After your education, how will you feel? 
Mga kapatid, I think all of these ten lepers, they are shouting for joy. They said, Oh, what a marvelous day! Oh, what a day today! But you know, my third point is, you saw the distress. What is the second? The, ano yun? The design. And then the difference. Bakit po difference? Because out of them, only one, yung nagbalik, na, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice, glorified God. This is the difference. I will ask you, what is the difference between a thieves and a politician? What is the difference between them? A thieves will get something and then run. But the politician will run first. And when he was in the position, will get something. That is the difference between them. So what is the difference here? The difference is the nine when they were here, they just go on their way. But thanks God that we have here an example of the man who up there he received the goodness of God, the blessing of God, the healing of his flesh, and then the healing of his soul. The Bible says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Amen? Amen. Uh, nagbalik. Nagbalik. Pagkatapos, sabi dito, and with a loud voice, glorified God. Ang ating mga buses, magamit pala ito para for God's glorification. Uh, yung makita niya yung magmarcha. Magmarcha doon sa Supreme Court. Marcha sa Malacanya. They are shouting. Duterte! Duterte! Stop being the President of the Philippines! Can you just imagine? And then when there are decisions made and they think it's different that use what? Why? They were shouting. And we Christian, we have to turn back and then with a loud voice we have to glorify God. The moment you sing in the service, the moment you stand to sing for the choir. You give your solo. Our God is glorified. Amen. That's why dito, this is the difference. If you are really a Christian, when you are healed, then you have to turn back and then return. And then in this church, you glorify God. Amen. Amen. Balik kayo dito. Pagkatapos, pag dito kayo na say, dito kayo nakatanggap ng mga biyaya, pagkatapos, where your pastor? Pastor Jerem. Okay. Dito. Turn back. Balik na. Balik tayo. Tulungan natin si Pastor Jerem. Tulungan natin ang church. Nakita ko yun dito, maraming mga missionary. Oh. Dati to, they were praying, they were praying in the Philippines because the Philippines now is the hub of missionaries willing to go to other foreign countries and be a missionary. We have to help them and we have to exert efforts that would glorify God. And remember, the Bible says, and feel down on his face. Yung pang -apat. I only have four points. Number one, the distress. Then the desire. Then the difference. And then the fourth one, the duty. Look at this. 
When I speak of duty, it is a rightful obligation. Parang legal na to eh. Rightful obligation of a Christian. It is not enough that you will go to the church and then listen, see, amen. As Pastor Jerem announces, we are paying the place and then we have electricity, everything. We help. We help. And the same thing in Bohol. I encourage them, although, but yung renta, renta ninyo dito, sa amin, mahal na mahal. Hindi kami maka-afford. Oh. Yung offering namin, maliit na. Nandoon kami sa village. Village. Yung mga tao, kami mga na, na, na vegetable, mais, oh. We could only have like bigger when it comes to during harvest time. Magdala sila na mga palay. Oh. Ganun. But they are still doing their obligation. And then I'm not comparing Manila and Bohol because God put you here because God knows that by His grace you can make it. Amen. Amen. God put us in Bohol because we are Boholanos. <laughs> okay? Yeah? Okay. And then remember, when you have that rightful obligation as it says here, and feel down on his face, at his feet, imagine that. Feel down on his face. Feel down. You just imagine that how it would be figured out. Feel down on his face at his feet giving thanks and he was a Samaritan and Jesus answering said were there not ten cleans but where are the nine Jesus Christ counted obligation it means that when there was that healing made by God God expect them to return because he said where are the nine what if up there the healing because the nine people they were not able to return Jesus Christ really, shh, in just fist of the finger pabalik so talaga mapunta nila Jesus have mercy on us but this one look at this yung ginawa niya fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan Member of this church, when was the last time you give thanks of your family? You said, Lord, thank you that I have a family. Yeah. When was the last time you said, thank you, Lord, that you put me into this ministry? That you really understand, because if you do not understand, you are like those people around. Keep on when you will how to live. But because you understand that the moment you give your day, Sunday, to God, God will not fail you. Yeah. It is different when you are the one running for the blessing and then you almost had that blessing and yet you cannot hold it. And then sabi mo, sayang, panalangin, but it is different when it is now the blessing that will run after you. You will run and then you say, Oh, no, no, no. Puno, puno na sa panalangin. Pastor, did you experience that? Yes, I experienced that. In the beginning of my ministry, I received only a support of 100 pesos. After six months, it was cut. I have one child at the time. I only have one wife. Uh, it was really, really hard. But I said to myself, we have to continue. And by the grace of God, that 35 years in the ministry. And now I have seen what it means to see the blessing of the Lord. Before I just 
ride a bicycle going visitation. You imagine, the road is very rough. Ride a car. And then hand out trucks. But by the blessing of the Lord, at this very time, God has blessed us. And I say, that you have to continue and you have even struggled because even the court president of the Philippines you know him? the court president of the Philippine Republic you still remember that? ah, uh, Pastor si Dagohoy? no, 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 no no, Dagohoy, he was the man who led the longest revolt in the Philippine history and he was a Buholano that lasted for 85 years. The fourth president of the Philippine Republic, President Carlos Polistico Garcia, when he said, that was November 8 of 1958, when he stood up and said, let us give notice to the world that we Filipinos, we are not afraid to suffer in afflicting moments of the stress and hardship just to gain an eternity of joy and freedom for the freedom that we have won at a price of supreme sacrifice could only be true and faithful when its roots drive deep into its own free soil that's the word Booker Washington said now I know that the success of life could not be measured by the things that you have achieved without counting all the difficulties which you have succeeded while trying to succeed. That's the word of Booker Washington. In 1926, a man who was so black and he was not allowed to enter into the school as there was a racial discrimination he finished elementary outside the building. He finished high school outside the building. Although he was given credence, and yet he suffered the racial discrimination. But after all, when he leads the biggest school in America, a Christian school, he said, now I know that success is to be measured not by what you have achieved, in life without counting all the difficulties which you have succeeded while trying to succeed. Masarap talaga. If we work hard and the story that we have is rightful obligation. Pagbalik siya, pagkatapos sabi niya, Lord, thank you very much, Lord, for healing me. And Lord, I will give my life to you. Ito ang tandaan natin. Tapos sa bigyan ng biyaya sa Panginoon, yung kalintasan sa ating kaluluwa, ibigay naman natin ang ating buhay sa Panginoon. Amen? Yeah, it's right for obli obligation. And then, the Bible says, and Jesus answering said, where there are not ten cleans, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Hi, Samaritan. It was a stranger. It means uh, there was no dealing between the Jews and the Samaritan. And you can read that in the book of John, chapter 5. But even though there was no dealing, this man went back and he could not face the Lord Jesus Christ because the Jews and then the Samaritan. The Jews belongs to this, and then the Samaritan just this, and they could not even look straight to Jesus. And yet, if we look this very closely, Jesus Christ accepted what he offered to him, his loud voice, and then when he turned back, and then he glorified God in his life. And that's really the purpose. When we became a Christian, we have to give God the glory. Amen? Amen. That's why 
The Bible says that He said, and thanks God. That's why I ask you, when was the last time you said, Lord, thank you for the salvation of my soul. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, that I have a parents to, to rely on. Thank you, Lord, that I have a church that I can go. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the pastor. At the time I need a counseling, I could just go and hear them talking to me. And then you thank the Lord for all the things that you have received in this life. So this story, it says, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath me the hope. Amen? Amen. Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath me the hope. So, it's the faith that counts. So number one, what is number one? The distress. Number two. Number three. And then number four. The duty. The third part. That's why we as Christians, we have to hold on together and then we have to glorify God in our means.